talks about micro trends, but I want to talk about macro trends. If you guys don't know what a macro... Are you coming up here? Come on, all the way. Good boy. If you guys don't know what a macro trend is, it's basically an overarching trend that sticks through probably like a decade or just multiple years. Contrast to a micro trend that is either like a niche group of people follow it or it's like one specific item that kind of just like comes and goes. I feel like if you watch fashion videos or my videos, you definitely know what a micro trend is. And I recently was like reminded what a macro trend is from the creator Kara Street Style. If you guys don't follow her on Instagram, you definitely should. I recently have come across her page and I'm loving it. Kind of reintroduced this and said some of her favorite macro trends and was like wondering in the comments what other people are liking. So I watched her video and you guys should too. It's just a short and then I wanted to talk about my own ma macro trends that I'm loving for the fall and I don't know. I just wanted to like touch on a different subject than negative. Also, I think with macro trends, it's something that a lot of like fashion creators forget about, including myself, because it's like we're trying to to use the word timeless instead of macro trend. One thing that uh, this creator touches on is wide leg jeans. Wide leg jeans are a macro trend. They've been around for like 10 years now and they're really not going anywhere. Um, and I think people would try to say that wide leg jeans are timeless and they're just not. Maybe you're gonna wear them for the rest of time, but that doesn't mean they're timeless in like the fashion world. I don't know, just like that idea of a macro trend. I don't know, it made me like think of clothes differently. So I like to do that just on this channel. Before we get into this video though, I did wanna say thank you so much to Missouri for sponsoring. You guys know I'm like always staffed in Missouri and they're one of the macro trends I wanna talk about in a little bit. Okay, so we already touched on the wide leg jean and pant. I feel like this is such an easy one to see. The shift from skinny jeans or even like the boyfriend cut to a full wide leg. They're still super prominent in styling today, but there will be a time when we start to gravitate towards like the skinny jean or even like a more tapered cut, that kind of thing. I know we're seeing like bits of that, but I would still say like for the everyday consumer, the wide leg jean is probably like the most common on trend jean. The next thing that I think is a macro trend in the past, I would say five to 10 years, are collars. This is obviously such like a broad thing to look at, but in like 2020, we saw lots of the white button down popping underneath like cardigans or crew necks. And now we see a lot of sweaters with the little like 70 style collar attached. We see peasant tops with like the ruffly collar, like think the Ghani, like big collar, um, and even jackets, whether it's like a bomber jacket with a little fold over collar or the trench coat with a big wide v-neck collar i think that collars are so trendy right now and it's something that we almost miss out because it seems like it's a timeless thing and yes in some ways like a white button down i would say is pretty timeless cuts and like fits of that can go in trendy but um we're seeing collars on everything and i think if you're thinking of buying something new like think of having a the getting a sweater with a little collar on it and it's something that's going to stick in the wardrobe for a long time um but still is a little bit on that trendy side i think that something like a collar too like a collar cardigan or a collared sweater collared jacket is something that you can wear past the like peak of the trend but um, it adds like that little bit of flair. I think a lot of times when I'm saving things on Pinterest too, I notice that they have colors. Next thing that we've seen so much of, and I think we will continue to see, is the maxi skirt. Um, we saw it with the denim, we saw it, we still see it with like the white tiered maxi skirt, and again, that like very like peasant, like cottage core type of way. I think that has been like an overarching style for a while now. Or just like a black, you know, like tube kind of maxi skirt that falls in like a totally different category of like fashion i feel like not even just like the maxi skirt the maxi dress too i feel like for a long time um especially like for weddings or dressing up 
uh, especially younger people would only gravitate towards like a mini dress and now it's like the maxi dress maxi skirt like midi maxi you know is uh very on trend and i think will stay that way for a while now there's ways of having it with like a slit um having an a-line bodycon with ruffles there's so many ways of doing this trend and um I love it. Next one falls very much into the fall and honestly people, you know, just carry it into all the seasons, but it's a knee-high boot. I was almost going to say a cowboy boot because we've been seeing them for so long now, <laughs> but it felt a little bit too niche and I was like, okay, what's like the broader term than that? <laughs> Ernie said I should have said the cowboy boot. Like in 2012 to probably like 2016, we saw so much of the thigh high and an ankle boot. And I remember like the reintroduction of the knee high boot. And I thought that they looked, honestly, when I first saw them, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so outdated. And I couldn't really get behind it. I thought of my mom wearing a knee high boot. I was like, I only want an ankle boot or a thigh high boot, which is so funny to think about now because those are like, just not in style. There's ways of wearing them, of course, but. They're just not as trendy as like a knee-high boot. The knee-high boot is also something that just like comes in and out of the trend cycle. Maybe there's people like me who think they're not trendy at a period of time, but I think you can always get away with wearing them, which is nice. Whether it's the fry boot, the cowboy boot, like uh, a heeled pointed toe, black knee-high boot, or a cowboy boot, there's so many ways. A moto boot, there's so many re- ideas reimagination what am i saying there's so many different like ideas or imaginative ways of like getting a knee-high boot definitely a macro trend that we like seem to miss i feel like and think are timeless but they're not i'm just so against calling like basically anything timeless because i'm not old like i don't think i'm that old but i've seen these things become out of style and come back in style so i know that they're not timeless okay the next thing that i think is definitely a macro trend and is so easy to see is gold jewelry whether it's dainty or chunky and statement i think gold jewelry is definitely the in metal of like the past 10 years honestly so i wanted to give a quick shout out to missouri and say thank you for sponsoring i wear missouri jewelry all the time this one's a newer piece this little like diamond ring. I've got these earrings I've had for a while now that feel so timeless. They're gold on the back, but are little pearls, which I, I think is like a trend right now. I don't know if it's gonna be macro or not. I love gold jewelry and I think so many people do too. I feel like you can also just see this with people getting their wedding bands and their engagement rings being gold instead of silver. Um, especially because I remember when like gold jewelry was looked at like grandma-y, especially not in high school. I think we were already at gold jewelry, so like 2012, but like I think like 2010, everybody wanted like sterling silver, everything, and like engagement bands and uh, wedding rings, stuff like that. A lot of us can look at our mom's wedding rings and engagement rings and they're silver. And now most people or a lot of people get gold. And it's fun because it's not something that like you can't wear silver jewelry now. It's just the trending but can still be worn, you know, past trend, whatever, all that kind of stuff. I know I'm gonna have these pieces forever. Give them to my daughter one day. Missouri just has some of the best quality jewelry. Um, you can tell that they're gonna last literally lifetimes, I would say. In college when I didn't have a baby, I was wearing like my stacks of jewelry all the time and it would just really spice up an outfit um and they lasted i mean I'm, I'm never gonna get rid of these pieces if you guys want to check out missouri you can use the link in the description box shop any of the pieces that i showed today so thank you again to missouri for sponsoring let's get on to the rest of the video okay the next one i want to talk about feels a little more niche than the other ones that are so like widely able to like fit into different categories and stuff like that but i wanted to give one that was a little bit more niche and that's peasant style tops and dresses i feel like i was gonna say like puff sleeves because this also just feels like something that we've been seeing so much of for so long the puff sleeves fit into this category a little bow in the front of your like peasant blouse a little button down the front this like airy thin material on dresses on tops i don't know if peasant is like the 
correct word for it but I'm gonna show obviously so many pictures here that you guys will see what I'm talking about you can have it in like a white linen or cotton fabric you can have it in a floral print even like a plaid or a stripe there's so many different ways of wearing it there's so many different ways of styling too I feel like it doesn't just necessarily have to be in like oh I dress cottagecore you can style it with a pair of moto boots and have it more like city chic kind of look or I don't know there's just so many ways of wearing this like peasant cut and it even falls into the like three-tiered maxi skirt like that feels like that peasant s and i feel like we've seen this for so long now i especially think like what was i wearing in college that i still have today and wear all the time and it's these like peasant style tops these two dresses come to mind one that shrunk in the dryer and i had to get rid of it and another one that i sold because i was in like a purge state of mind and i didn't think i'd ever fit in it again after um getting pregnant but if i still had those dresses i know i'd wear them today and i actually like look on depop thread up all those places still to find the dresses and repurchase so um i was in college in 2016 and it's almost it's 2024 so i feel like that's like indicator of a macro trend and i know i would have worn them in middle school in high school they almost feel like timeless but i know they're not and i won't say that but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun just like thinking of, I don't know, a better thing to talk about than the negatives on fashion and trends. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to use the link in the description box and check out Missouri. And I'll see you guys in a few days. Bye.